Hello there. My name is Nikki Wright, and I want to welcome you guys to Beauty Superstars Talk, your backstage pass to experts in beauty. So thanks for joining us. And we are about to start a new journey into the root of hair loss. Um, so I'd like to take time to welcome back our sponsor for this exciting series. And I'm going to just mute you right for a second if I can. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to mute Miss Gloria for one second. Um, but I want to um, welcome back our sponsor um, for this ex exciting series, which is um, the Black Beauty Expo. And the Black Beauty Expo is the hottest show for Black creative entrepreneurs in hair, fashion, photography, modeling, and makeup, um, all, all of the above. And their next show is August 1st in Atlanta, Georgia. And so be sure to follow them to keep up with the latest news on the show and special vendor packages. And in addition, I'm excited to announce that I'm now the global education director for the Black Beauty Expo. So if you are interested in educating, please reach out to me. And it's actually amazing how many posts I see online about how wonderful things are when you're in a salon suite. But when I speak to people one on one, I hear a different story. So. Don't struggle in silence anymore. If um, if it's not going you know as well as you might like, um, just visit beautysuperstars.com and download my new free guide. Um, it's five things to know before you open your salon suite, and it's perfect even if you're already in a suite. Um, stylists have been saying to, that it's really a game changer, so I'm excited about it, and I hope it'll be helpful for you. And so. This month, we are going to take a deep dive into, unfortunately, one of the fastest growing areas in the beauty industry, which is hair loss. Millions of women are losing their hair earlier in life and at record rates. And as hairstylists, how can we help our clients? And if you're actually experiencing thinning or hair, lo hair loss, what is it that you need to do? Who do you need to see? Where do you even start? So that's what we're going to be taking a look into over the next four Tuesdays. And I have some experts that you're absolutely going to love. So be sure to mark your calendar and you just may want to pull out some pen and paper or a tablet or something tonight so to take a few notes. So my guest tonight is actually a world-renowned non-surgical hair replacement specialist. So say that five times fast. <laughs> So she's actually trained many of the best hair loss um, specialists in the country. Her name is Gloria Gigi Ford, and she will share her own story as a beauty professional and what we don't know but need to know about hair replacement. So as I mentioned, hair loss is actually affecting millions of women in the U.S., and I can guarantee you that some of them are actually sitting in your chair. So what can we do to educate and intervene early enough to make a difference for our clients? Um, these hair, these hair loss talks that we're doing now, they're actually for consumers and for beauty pros alike. So please feel free to invite someone who wants to learn more. And before we get into our interview tonight, I'm actually excited to share that this week is a double header. So on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, I'll be back. Um, I'm going to meet with someone who's not connected to hair loss at all, but is a behind the scenes icon in our industry, Mr. Fred Miller Jr. So you've heard the saying, the show must go on. And well, it actually doesn't go on unless this man and his team are working their magic behind the scenes. And so in his 30 plus year career, he's met, worked with and created lasting relationships with many of the legends and icons of our industry. Names you might recognize like Sam Fine, Kim Kimball, Olive Benson, and so many more top hairstylists, makeup artists and educators. He's a legend in his own right, but he's going to take us on a journey to share stories of backstage bloopers and his experience in the industry as a trade show and event producer, which is a career path you may not even know about. So stories of some of the famous people he's worked with, he'll share those too. So you don't want to miss it. So that's going to be on Thursday uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern. So if you're not already, I actually invite you to follow me on Instagram at Mickey Wright. Um, just M-I-K-I-W-R-I-G-H-T, and I'll be sharing this month hair loss tips. So you want to stay tuned in so you can catch all of them. <clears throat> and if you've missed any of the previous Beauty Superstars talk interviews, it's like you can actually catch them now on beautysuperstars.com, and you can actually listen to the podcast there, um, as well as on Apple, iTunes, um, Spotify, wherever you love to listen to, to podcasts. And I'd love for you to actually subscribe and leave your comments if you would. So 
many people have actually, you know, asked how they can partner with us to expand the network, you know, the work that we're doing. And I'm happy to announce that we have a new partner in the program, a new partner program. Um, and you can sponsor a deserving student or beauty pro with training that they can uh, use to advance their career. So just visit beautysuperstars.com and look for the red button. And um, again, my name is Mickey Wright. I'm actually grateful each and every week for the privilege to meet with amazing black beauty bosses who are making their mark in the beauty industry. And this is actually more than a podcast, but a movement to encourage black excellence, entrepreneurship, to preserve our history and to bring healing to our industry. So we are starting this month off with one of the top educators in non-surgical hair replacements, Ms. Gigi Ford. And without further ado, I want to welcome her and I'm going to share a little bit of her bio before we jump right in. Gloria Gigi Ford has dedicated her career to helping women suffering from hair loss find non-surgical solutions and creative, undetectable hair prosthesis. Her greatest passion is working with the American Cancer Society, the Alopecia Foundation, and the Tri Trichotillomania, I think I pronounced that right, I'm not sure, foundation. Um, Gigi travels the world educating cosmetologists, researching new techniques, and exploring base design. She is an internationally renowned educator and expert in hairstyling, hair replacement, consulting, product and project development, program planning, and training curriculum and design. She's multifaceted and she's designed prosthesis for new concept hair goods and on right. Gigi holds a master's degree in cosmetology with the National Beauty Culture League. She has traveled to Hong Kong, China, Korea, and Indonesia to study hair prosthesis design. She's also studied in the UK at Vidal Sassoon in hair cutting. She now tours the US training future and experience hair prosthesis specialist in the correct process of non-surgical hair replacement and the theory behind it. She also helps specialists start their own business in hair replacement. Gigi's hair prosthesis education materials include instructional books, audio books, videos, and business programs. Her book, Don't Lose Your Clients Because They're Losing Their Hair, is a step-by-step -step educational guide in hair replacement. Gigi has also authored educational books such as All About Insurance, Non-Surgical Hair Replacement Medical Edition, The Business, The Business Plan, What to Say and How to Say It, and her newly published book, Hair Replacements, The Curriculum, which can all be purchased on her website. So she wrote um, her new book as a gift to the industry and to empower the next generation of designers. It is a compilation of over 30 years of education, training, research, and experience in spite of Ms. Ford's hectic schedule, her established nonprofit organization, which is Locks to Give, is, a very, is very high on her list of priorities. And you are just so impressive, <laughs> Ms. Gigi, so welcome. First, I want to say thank you so much for this opportunity that you invited me to your platform. I watch you from afar. I see you in all the trade shows. And I can honestly say that, that I admire you for many, many years. I love the work that you're doing in our community of non-surgical hair replacement or the business, I'm sorry, and the professional cosmetologist business. And I really as respect the work that you do because we all have gifts and talents and we can do the service and the work, but we don't have the business mind or the business set. And people need help to navigate that business. There's more to it than just application. So I admire the work that you do. And earlier I heard you speak about a show that you do every year. I didn't know about that either. So I definitely you want to go about it, get a part of it as well. So as I said, I thank you for this opportunity for me to share uh, with your audience and with everybody all over uh, all the different platforms. Uh, I'm just here to be a servant. It's not about me at all. Uh, mm -hmm. I had my turn and I loved it. And now I just want to empower, equip, and help you position yourself in this field of not surgical hair replacement, which is my specialty. So right. if you have a yeah. question, I'll answer on the topic. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much. I really appreciate that. The respect is mutual and um, it's like it's crackling again. <laughs> if you want to try to get on the um, on the iPad. I don't even know if yeah, you can so hear me. Talking, 
I'll continue to talk guys about what I do and what why I did. What yeah. I did and why, you know, well, tell us, uh, tell us how you got started. Tell us how you got yeah, started. I've been with hair. A cosmetologist since 1977. So like okay. everyone else, I started off in the beauty salon and just did regular hair. And then I was introduced to hair weaving in like 1978, 79. And I went into hair weaving. And I did that for about 20 years. It was two reasons why I had to reposition myself. One, it took so long. And it was brutal on my body. And then mm. the experience that the clients had sitting so long and trying for us to try to figure it out, especially if there was hair loss. So as I was doing my hair weaving, I got more and more clients would come in that had hair loss. And of course, mm. hair weaving is made for people with hair because you're weaving it to the hair. So by us, you know, not knowing, I didn't have training, I did all I could to attach it to that hair. But I saw I was causing a problem. I knew I was not a solution. It made it look, uh -huh. look good, but I was causing more hair loss. So that's what transitioned me from hair weaving to hair replacement because I wanted to be a solution and not a problem, mm -hmm. right? And back wow. then when I started off, people wore wigs when they had hair loss. Not a cranial prosthesis, but a wig. They just put okay. on a wig. Nothing available so, hold hold on as well. It's like they're they're saying it's like um, that the audio isn't clear. I, I'm not hearing it so clearly, but I'm hearing it. But definitely, let's see. Let's just pause and see if you can get on the other um, device because we want to hear what you're saying. It's like I can hear, I can tell it's like so special, and I already have questions. <laughs> I'm gonna mute and see if that helps. Okay, I'm going to mute her out while she's getting all of that together, but we appreciate you guys being here. And um, I don't know if you could hear before, you know, while she was sharing, you know, that she started out as a cosmetologist and that she, um, I guess it sounds like the next year or so, got into hair weaving. And the weaving looks like she's coming up now. Are you on there? Can you hear me better? I can hear you better. Okay, I'm going to go off of here. Okay. Hold on, let me turn off this. Okay, that one's off. Okay. Okay, let's see what we got now. Okay. Okay, now, how's this? Okay. Well, we can definitely hear you better. Okay. If you guys can hear a better, okay, I, I see a better. <laughs> I was going to say, just put a two in there and let us know. All right. Um, Okay, so we just want to see you as if we can. There we go. Okay, so that's that's so much better as far as the audio, at least from my end. Okay. So, um, will you kind of start over for us because I, you know, we'll we'll edit all of this and and make it. Okay. Funny. But okay. we want to hear so, the story. Yeah, the question was, how did I get into uh, non-surgical hair replacement? Like well, I really said, started with hair. I started off just doing hair like everybody else in the okay. beauty salon. Then I transitioned into hair weaving. I was introduced to hair weaving in like 1978. And I did that for like over 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. And I was starting to get more clients come in with hair loss, alopecia, chemotherapy, radiation, different types of uh, tracts and alopecia from wearing hair weaves, right? And wearing braids. I was able to get that hair on their head. I was very creative. I always came up with the way, but it was two things that bothered me. One, I was causing more hair loss, and two, the uh, atmosphere as far as how the client felt sitting there so long, the tension, making it so tight, sort of stay on. And I'm like, God, it's got to be a better way, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was introduced to hair replacement. So by being introduced to hair replacement, by being at different organizations like the American Hair Loss uh, Council, uh, different uh, manufacturing companies would have their own seminars and workshops. And I was taking all of these classes. And after taking all the classes, uh, I learned about non-surgical hair replacement. After I learned about non-surgical hair replacement, 
And then it was about transitioning those clients from hair weaving to hair replacement, right? Mm -hmm. So I did that transition by introducing them to the hair replacement, the cranial prosthesis, by letting them see that this is going to look more natural, it's going to feel more comfortable, it's going to last much longer, and it's going to be all that you've been looking for when it comes to your hair loss and hair replacement. But only not only from that, Nick, I'm gonna come back to a part. But although I did hair replacement uh, up until like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, in my uh, journey of hair replacement, I started working with other manufacturers. They would hire me to design prosthesis for them. But how did I do that? I, I went over to China, Hong Kong, Indonesia, all over Asia, and I studied at the factories from the beginning to the end. So I was able to learn the process of designing and actually making that prosthesis. So by me seeing that, now that's what brought my creative juice out to be mm -hmm. a designer of cranial prosthesis. Wow, that's impressive. So, <laughs> and then, you know, life happens, life happens. So during that journey, uh, like 2010, nine, I had to have spinal surgery. So mm -hmm. I had a couple of spine surgery. So that took me from behind the chair of servicing the clients with non-surgical hair replacement because I couldn't stand a long time. Mm -hmm. And so that then I shift again, I pivot again, and with straight education. That's what okay. we are now, passing the torch to the next generation. Yeah, absolutely love it. I, I know uh, when we we're having the trouble with the audio, I think you mentioned that how brutal um, the weaving and all of that was on your body. Yes. Yeah. In and the so client. Yeah, and I'm sure some people can relate to that. And so this yes. may be a, a, a path mm -hmm. into a whole nother career. Like you Absolutely. said, you're still in the pivoting. same category. Absolutely. Right, yeah. right. And yeah, that's so, important to me that I say this too. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, in this industry, you've been doing hair a long time and you're like, you know, you're tired of doing what you've been doing for the last 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. But that does not mean you have to leave that industry. There's right. so many angles and levels and platforms that you can transition into and still be in what you love without doing what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I love that you're you're talking about that. That's one of the reasons I do the show so people can see that you don't, that's not the only path, you know, that right. there are so many other um, areas that you can explore and yes. see what's a good fit for you. Yes. Yeah. And, and talk to us why, since you brought that up, it's like, what um, experience would you say, like the people that you work with, you know, you've trained so many people across the country. Mm -hmm. um, what was their experience with 2020? I mean, 2020 was, was yes. crazy. Not you know? only their experience, but uh -huh. I had to uh, pivot. Mm -hmm. I'm not a technical person. Uh, I hire people to do all my technical work. So I had to learn. I hired a coach to teach me how to get online and teach my classes. So mm -hmm. for the uh, students or the professionals that were still wanting to learn and still had to service their clients, that's what I did. I showed them how to maintain your business during this pandemic. So if this pandemic can teach us anything, it should have taught us to position ourselves so no matter what come your way, you can still run that business. So mm -hmm. what I did was I did all online training uh, by way of Zoom, Streamline, different platforms. But for our service and the clients, I still was able to, and I shared with the uh, cosmetologist, hair replacement specialist, you still can service your clients without going to their home or them coming to your business. By How did we do that? By mm -hmm. number one, you must build a relationship with these clients. You have to have a relationship with your clients. And so many people don't have that relationship. They just do their hair. And there's right. a difference in closing a sale, selling some products, doing their hair in a relationship. I don't mean tell your personal business, but a relationship. When you have a relationship, you have trust. And when you have trust, your clients would respect you and do what you ask them to do because they trust you. Mm -hmm. So we were able to still do consultations online, right? Maybe you're just doing an order for a client. You had to show them how to take the tech measure and measure their own heads. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You can show your base material rings online, your density chart, your curl ring. You can do all of that consultation online wow. and get that fit as well. So during the pandemic, I've done at least six orders with the VA. And there was from anywhere from $3,800 to $7,800 per client during that pandemic. A couple yeah. were new, a couple were returning because uh, every year the VA paid for them another prosthesis. So the mm -hmm. returning ones, I had their paperwork, their files, I had their template of their head, their mold. Mm -hmm. So that's so important that not only relationships, but that you have a paper trail, that you right. keep files on everything you do with a client. So when times come, if they're not there, you go right to that file and do whatever you need to be able to do. It's very, mm -hmm. very important. Yeah. So during the pandemic, we were still able to service the clients mm -hmm. uh, in the way of ordering. I'm not talking about doing their hair. Right. During the pandemic, I also shared with them on how to um, make little kits for your clients. That means everything they need at home to maintain until they get there. Not mm -hmm. teach them step by step to do what you do, but in this business, we have client kits because they go on vacation they right. have to maintain and they might not can get to you so in my courses i make sure not only that you know how to service the client how to maintain the service whether you in person or online mm -hmm. or at a distance a lot of clients from out of state all my life of doing this business i travel from state to state mm -hmm. or i did the business from california they were in texas or they were in uh as far as overseas, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Australia, yep. all different places. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I hope everybody's grabbing this because it's like that's such a, a great opportunity to be able yes. to service clients without actually, you know, putting Being hands there. on them. You don't have to be in the same room. You don't have absolutely. to be in the same state you or must, even country. You must. You must have all the tools in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so many tools that's needed in this business of non surgical hair replacement. It's yeah. not a one size fit all at all. Yeah, and I, I want to talk to you. It's like there's so many, um, so many questions and everything that have come out of what you're sharing. Mm -hmm. But, um, but one, let's just get like real basic as far as like women. We're we're seeing it feels like the numbers are rising right now. I've heard anything from like six to seven million to thirty million women are experiencing some form of hair thinning or hair loss, and I don't know if you have, you know, figures and that type of thing, but what is it you're seeing with with the women in the, um, you know, that we're servicing in terms of consumers, and you know, are there differences since you have been in this for a little while from what you saw early Absolutely. on? Absolutely, the numbers are growing, and I'll say they really escalated. Uh, I'll say in the '90s, and why it was because of things that were done in the '70s and the '60s. Jerry curls, uh, perms, put them in the dry, hot dryer with chemicals on their head, uh, traction alopecia, a lot of tight braids, too tight, and mm -hmm. young children. And then as they mature, they end up with traction alopecia. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them might be diet, you know, from their diet or what they eat or medication. But the, mm -hmm. what I saw really is from now in 2020, 20, 2017, 18, 19, the lace front wigs. Mm. So it went from the traction of the braids, uh, from wigs, chemicals, and then it went to the lace wigs. All of these different services cause permanent hair loss. Mm. So it really has multiplied. And that's so important that uh, I share my trainings. You can't put every client in the same type of prosthesis. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if you have somebody with a full head of hair and want that hair for cosmetic and you put and you attach a lace hair piece on their head with the way of adhesives, which uh, they call it glue, but you don't use glue, you use medical grade adhesives, it's made mm -hmm. for skin, not for hair. So mm -hmm. for the last five years since the lace pieces have really been like out as a trend, right? It's nothing new. Uh, we've been doing lace wigs back in the 60s, 70s, uh, mm. you know, behind stage Hollywood. That's what they right. were doing. 
but far as the uh, cosmetology community thought it was something new and was not trained to use them properly mm -hmm. or to install them properly. And so right. that's why, so that's caused a lot of uh, hairline around the perimeter, hair mm -hmm. loss, and then also throughout the head because of mildew, mold, mm -hmm. you're covering up that hair, you're smothering that hair and scalp. So you got to have different options depending on the client's lifestyle and what type of hair loss or if any at all do she have. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so and with me, it has risen. Hair loss is an epidemic mm -hmm. and a steady growing. Wow. Yes. So, you know, it's like, as I want to go through like some of the basics, like, thank you for sharing that as far as, you know, what's, you know, what the causes are and where the trends mm -hmm. are going in terms mm -hmm. of the numbers rising. Yes. yes. Um, what is the difference like between a wig that we, you know, have seen at least since the sixties, you know, with the, you know, Diana Ross and the Supremes yeah. and all that kind of yes. stuff yes. and a unit, which came, you know, that term came into being and a cranial prosthesis. Okay, what are first, the yeah. So that people have an idea of like what they're talking okay. about or what options so, there are. For, okay. far as a wig. Mm -hmm. uh, now a wig, is made for people with hair. Wigs okay. are made to clip on, bobby pin, pin it on, right? Mm -hmm. Adjust the strap in the back, make it tighter. Mm -hmm. Now, you can get wigs for people without hair as well. Now, a cranial prosthesis is so many terms. Unit, system, design, cranial prosthesis. All of those, we're talking about medical hair loss or hair loss clients. What's the difference? Okay. Cranial prosthesis, which is the cranial, the head, the prosthesis is the missing part. So you have a prosthesis leg, you have a prosthesis hand. That's the missing part. So for hair is cranial prosthesis, which is the hair. Made okay. for people with little or no hair. They're made to attach to your skin. Wigs are made to attach to your hair. Okay. And okay. there's a difference. If you try to put on a cranial prosthesis uh, over someone's with hair, it might slip off because of the foundation. So it depends on the foundation. With the cranial prosthesis, we design the, pro the, the foundation. We, we choose the foundation. Polyurethane, monofilament, lace, uh, what else, silk, all those different materials. So depending on where those materials our place on the prosthesis is what make us stay on or slide or not stay on. Where mm -hmm. with the wig, it's machine made. It might have a mono top, but it's made to stay on without anything or pins or clips or a uh, little rubber in the back. Okay. And that's what type of wig you're saying? That's which we call a cosmetic wig. Cosmetic dollar wig. You can buy a wig for three, four thousand dollars. It's not mm -hmm. because it's a wig, it's not going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. But the price comes in in a wig and a prosthesis by the hair, the texture, the length, the origin of the hair, the yeah. foundation. How's the hair put in the base? Is it machine made or is it one strand at a time ventilated? Okay. Okay. And, and so the difference are wigs made for hair, prosthesis made for no hair. Okay. And so unit, you mentioned unit as like another alternate word for the prosthesis. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's many names, uh, but the medical term is cranial prosthesis. Okay. Okay. Toupee. Remember the word toupee? Sure do. Right. That's yeah. a top unit. Now we call them partials. We call them parties, closures, all of those different names. Okay. But back in the day, we called it a toupee, but it's still into Back then, when they called it a toupee, it looked it heavy. It was thick, like a rug. So right. things have changed majorly. Okay. But still, in the book, you can still find the term toupee. Okay. And gotcha. that was made for someone without hair in that location. Only in that top area or wherever it might be. Right. So okay. you're gonna, anytime it's partial, you're only going to replace the area that's missing. Okay. Unless they want to cover the whole head. Yes. Okay. Yes. So with, with some of the, um, the clients that you may see with, um, 
the missing hairline area from like the lace front. It's like, what would be an option for them? Because that hair loss is then permanent. Yes. Now they don't have to cover up their whole head. If it's right. just the hairline gone, they want to replace the line, the hairline. Now that's a very, there's a perfect example for a lace front. Okay. Okay. And I say lace, it's not the only option. You can do polyurethane, but polyurethane is thicker, it's warmer. Mm -hmm. Lace give the appearance that the hair is growing right out the scalp. Okay. There's different types of lace. You have your Swiss lace, you have your French lace. The French lace is stronger, more durable. The mm -hmm. Swiss lace is finer, thinner. Hollywood lace is like toilet paper to tear. It's very easy, mm -hmm. but it's very fragile, but it looks very natural. So that's yeah. why your foundations is so important. Learn those base materials because you can't just order a hair piece and mm -hmm. think it's going to work for that client. You got to go into her lifestyle. Why she want it? How long she want to last? Mm -hmm. Do she exercise? Do she sweat? Maybe she live in a hot place, Arizona or Texas. All right. of that comes into play when you're ordering. I don't care if it's a stock, a pre-design, or a custom. Mm -hmm. The foundation, the foundation. People look at the outside, the length, the color, the texture, and buy it. That's not how you buy it. Okay. Okay. That's only part of it. So, so there may be someone watching that is experiencing hair loss. So what would you suggest to them as far as finding someone who kind of understands what you're talking about and can educate them? Yes. I highly recommend for the consumer, you interview the person before you go to that person. You need to ask them questions, their experience, how long they've been trained. Uh, what's some of the options that you have? You have to interview them. There's so much information out there and the consumer know as much and some more than some of the professionals because they have done the research and study. So I always say interview that person that you're going to go and uh, have them design or buy a prosthesis for you. They mm -hmm. must understand base materials. You know, they can give you just a basic overall conversation counsel on the phone. Not to give you, can't give you a price unless you come in and have, a, you know, measurements or molds and that type of thing. But mm -hmm. they can tell you, well, I design uh, the prosthesis. I use different base materials, monofilament, skin, lace, uh, Swiss lace, French lace, uh, silk, whatever. They can mm -hmm. also say, uh, I do different types of templates, tape mold, cast mold, silicone mold, 3D scanning. I mean, these kind, they need to be able to answer these kind of questions. I mm -hmm. order the hair. A uh, virgin hair, maybe double drawn, single drawn hair, uh, maybe got the cuticles on it. These, this, the conversations, if they're not talking to you using this language, they're not the one. Okay. Not the one. Okay. They're not the one. Not okay. The one. And Absolutely. So, so I say interview uh -huh. your professional. Interview mm -hmm. them. Okay. Okay. Yes. And so you gave us some really good things to look for and some of it, you know, make lays over people. It's like, oh, wow. Yes. Okay. There's all that to know. Yes. Yes. But um, yeah, for us hairstylists, mm -hmm. I'm no longer in the salon, but um, definitely, you know, see different um, issues with scalps, different issues with hair. What should we be looking for, you know, to help um, maybe avoid them getting to the point where they need the hair replacement? Well, I'm not a trichologist. Right. or a dermatologist. So uh -huh. I can't really talk a lot about the scalp, mm -hmm. but as far as the hair, uh, what do you look for before you put someone in a uh, partial or prosthesis or any type of attachment, you need to make sure their hair is strong. Okay. Hair that's been permed, over permed, over bleached, uh, is very weak and you can't put a lot of stress on that hair. Mm -hmm. Now the scalp, I always recommend if the hair loss is there for them to get diagnosed by a dermatologist or okay. some trichologist, mm -hmm. because sometimes the hair will grow back. You don't mm -hmm. want somebody to invest two, three, four, five, six thousand dollars on something and then six months later their hair will grow back. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So it's very important that they get diagnosed on what type of hair loss they have. Maybe they've done that already, and then you as a professional. Still, maybe their scalp has uh, got open abrasions on it or yeah. bumps on it or um, 
different things like that. You don't want to cover up that stuff. You have to open yourself up for a lawsuit. So definitely uh, diagnose uh, before any type of attachment and mm-hmm. always a consultation, always a test strand. Uh, test their skin, make sure they can use tapes, bonds, adhesives. You know, okay. we test behind the ear or at the wrist of the um, the wrist of the arm. Okay. Uh, test strands for the different type of products that you might use on them as uh, far as uh, tapes and adhesives and that okay. thing. Yeah. And that's going to be touching the skin. Some people are allergic to cotton. Some people are allergic to polyester. You right. Know? So you have to make sure they're not allergic. Because these materials are materials. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that's very important to know. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so with... Um, with you know where we are in in the salon, you know you said suggest that they see a dermatologist, which I think is the best. Absolutely, design. yeah. It is uh, hair loss. Now there's a difference than hair just thinning because you got old, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, like if it's early, if they are like teenagers in their twenties, thirties, forties, might be an underlying condition. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and what, when you say older, because I actually was just uh, kind of writing an article on how that's like kind of the go-to, oh, I'm getting older. But it's yeah. like a lot of the people that say that are like in their 40s and 50s. And from my experience, it's like mm-hmm. typical hair thinning doesn't happen until you're maybe around 70. And so I'm like, you're much too young for this to be thinning because you're getting older because it's like you're not that old. No, 40s not <laughs> old at all. But it might be, you know, generational. It might be a gene, right? That you know, so that can happen at a very young age, right? Right. Or, or it can be a medication they're on. Yes. Or it could be a diet they're on. Mm-hmm. Or it can be something devastating happening in their lives. Right. Uh, that all of this cause hair loss. Trauma right. Cause hair loss. Yeah. So, what would cause someone to need a hair replacement? I, uh, I, I would say it's a choice part of it. Okay. So cosmetic, that's a choice. I want to change my look. I want it longer. I want it thicker. I want mm-hmm. the color to change. Cosmetic. Mm-hmm. But if it's medical, mm-hmm. it's because they're trying to ple- replace what's missing. Okay. Okay. And if it could it's be medical, they or... want to replace what's missing. Okay. So like, for example, uh, someone going through chemo. A lot of uh, my experience with if people went through chemo or radiation. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to look different. They just wanted to look right. normal. They mm-hmm. want their hair to look as close as possible as what it was before they lost it. Right, right. So it's different. People want it for different reasons and for different. Uh, so that all comes into play when you're designing or ordering for them. Mm-hmm. Okay. If they want it for a change or do they want to just replace what they had? Okay. And so uh, with like a, a chemo uh, patient or client, uh, um, um, like you say, they wanted to just look like their normal yeah. hair. Just they, want to replace what they had. Yeah. And it's only going to be like temporary per se versus someone. Well, like chemo, been... chemo can be temporary. Mm-hmm. Or radiation might be permanent because really? it burns the skin. Mm. It burns the scalp. It can cause permanent hair loss. Oh, wow. And chemo, some people here grow back, some don't. Or it might mm-hmm. come back in a different texture. Yeah. Or it might have bald spots. Okay. Uh, lupus, you know, hair mm. coming and goes. Female mm. pattern baldness is going to be permanent. Some right. uh, types of alopecia can be permanent. Mm-hmm. Some come back. So uh, that's why it's so important that the the professional is educated. You need you learn the basics in school, but you still need to take a trichology class just for the basics, just so you can say yes. You need to go to a dermatologist. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, because before you design and put somebody in anything, you want mm-hmm. to make sure that you design the right product for that person. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, and and that's it's one of my rants. I think anyway, it's like I'm not a big rant person, but it's like I keep seeing a lot of posts online where the uh, clients are. Mm-hmm. I mean, the stylists are showing on in some of the Facebook groups um, in particular, like these scalps that have all kinds of stuff going on, and they're like midway through a service you know what do you guys think this is Mm -hmm. and it's like no it's like that's the first thing we should be doing is looking at the hair and scalp and assessing you know it's like in anything that's not a normal healthy scalp we should be referring out to 
a dermatologist Absolutely. before we do any and, you know, and we have to stay in our lane as well, Nick, uh, Nikki. Stay mm -hmm. in your lane. You're not a doctor. Right. You know, but a trichologist, they are able to identify with some things. Right. Some things you need to refer them to the professional, I believe. Mm -hmm. For me, my specialty is if the trichologist can't help you, if the dermatologist can't help you, now mm -hmm. you come to me. Right. Okay. That's why the dermatologist is able to write that prescription because mm -hmm. there's nothing else I can do for you. So let me write you a prescription for a cranial prosthesis. Okay. Okay. Yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and would it typically be the dermatologist that would be writing that type of? No, it could be any medical doctor can write a okay. prescription. Just like you go to the doctor, they give you cough medicine, uh, pain mm -hmm. pills, uh, any kind of pill, cholesterol, okay. whatever. Any medical doctor, even a psychiatrist, can okay. write a prescription. Any okay. medical doctor can write a prescription. Interesting. Okay. Yes. And yeah. but every client don't have the coverage. To go right. To okay. Way. So they might have to pay out of pocket. So it's important that you have payment options, care credit, uh, PayPal. You know, you can do PayPal credit because okay. if the insurance don't pay for it, it's a, it could be very pricey. Okay. It's an investment. Okay. It's an right. investment. And when people have hair loss, they will invest in it because mm -hmm. this is what they need, not what they want. Right, right. Yeah. It's an investment. Yeah, I think that's um, really good. You mentioned the the payment options and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Are they hard to get approved for, like care credit or something? No, no. Okay. Uh, some of them don't even ask for credit. Uh-huh, okay. You know, like PayPal credit don't ask for uh, credit. I don't think uh, care credit either. And okay. There's called Global Check. Uh, mm -hmm. That's another platform for payments. And then okay. I've always had my own payment plans uh, when I ran the Hair Replacement Center. Because they're all high ticket items. So you have to have options for people. Use right. your credit card. Six months, nine months, no interest. Mm -hmm. Just many options out there available. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really, I think, helpful to know. Because it's like, yeah. we know it can get pricey. Absolutely. And, like you say. And, you know, and there's all type of foundations, like the one I have, that donate for mm -hmm. uh, financially challenged people. Uh, okay. mainly, I do it mainly with children. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they can't afford it. Uh, the American Cancer Society, the Alopecia Foundation, they all, it's, uh, uh, Wigs for Kids, there's all mm -hmm. type of uh, networks that actually donate as well. Wow. For yeah. medical related hair loss, medical related hair loss, not because you just want some long, beautiful hair, <laughs> because you need it. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yeah we, we did a clubhouse yesterday talking about, um, you know, why are women losing their hair? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came up was um, Silas, who had uh, seen her, her co workers actually, um, like five year old who was experiencing uh, alopecia. Mm -hmm. she, she was just really kind of stunned because she hadn't seen a, a child that young yes. with it. But uh, someone else was describing, you know, a child that, that had no hair. Yes. You know, the, what is it, Totalis, I think. Yes. Um, and so it was, you know, it's good to know that there's options for them. There's many options out there. And people, if you in the industry, you should know what these options are for your client. I had to stand up a little bit. I'm sorry. Okay. Nope, I you're good. about the back problem. I still have it. Right. Okay. I had to stand up a little bit, but I'll sit back down in a minute. So, yes, I mean, this business is so broad. I mean, right. It's just so many angles, so much to know. And you have to be prepared. You have to know it all if you're going to mm -hmm. be in this business. It's not just uh, learning how to do a hair weave and learn how to put on a lace front and wig. No, it's way more than that. Absolutely right. way more than that. Yeah. Absolutely more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so go back to, you were talking about building a relationship with the client. Yes. And where would you suggest starting? Because I think that's a really big challenge, especially for some of the newer stylists, because it's like they're on text, they're on uh, social media, they're on all these different platforms where they're not actually getting experience having conversations. And mm -hmm. a lot of things they don't get, you know, clients don't seem like they're getting asked or they're trying to do consultations by text, uh, which never seems mm -hmm. like it's well. And, uh, <laughs> you know, what can you share about, you know, how do you start to build that relationship instead that, of, uh, you know, do that person uh, number there? Number one, 
Yeah, going into the industry, number one, you need to have integrity. You should have integrity. And then with the integrity, you're going to do the right thing if you have integrity. You're going to put the client first, right? It's about what the client needs, not about what you need. It's about right. what does that client need? What's that desire for that client? I'm sorry. Right? And uh -huh. so to build a relationship, I tell them all the time, it's not like close the sale, close the sale. It's build a relationship. And how do I start doing that? By showing her that I'm educated, I'm prepared. I have options for you. Look out for her. Recommend what's best for her as a professional, mm -hmm. right? And then also help them figure out ways to pay. Just, mm -hmm. you, just like taking care of somebody in your family. Mm -hmm. You want the best for them. Right. You're going to have all these options for them. The same with this business and with these clients with hair loss. And as you do that, they feel that. They see right. that. They know when you just penny pinching them. They know when you just about the money. They feel that. So just like with any other relationship, it takes time. And as time go on, they trust you more and more and more. Then it gets to the point, whatever you recommend, they go for it. They want it. They're going to do it. Right. So it's just like building any other relationship. It's work. Because mm -hmm. when you build a relationship, you're not, you know, more than likely if something go wrong, they'll work with you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a relationship, it might, it might take you to court. Right. And sue right. you. Because mm -hmm. you're talking about large ticket item. Right. You know, this is thousands of dollars. So when you build that relationship, nothing's perfect. Nothing, mm -hmm. But to be honest, I'm sorry, Ms. Jones, the fact we got it wrong. You know, mm -hmm. you have to admit it. Admit what's right. wrong. But I'm going to do all I can to make this right. Mm -hmm. And you make it right. Right. Because it can happen. Everything ain't peaches and cream. <laughs> it's not. But you got to know how to navigate that. Make the client and very important. It's about the client, not about you. You're here to serve. Yes. And so that relationship is very important. You build that relationship. You got a client forever. And she would invest whatever you tell her because mm -hmm. that's what she needs. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's powerful. It's like, I, I love that. And I hope yeah. that people get something out of it to be able to interact with their clients. In a yes, different you got to put in to get out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, to, you have to invest in them as well as them investing in you. Right. You have to invest time. You have to show them how. You got to take time with them. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, they don't keep it up right. It's going to fall apart or don't stay on. Then they say you didn't do it right. You did it right, but you didn't take care of her and show her what to do to maintain. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. So maybe she combed it, put a hole in it. And she's like, oh, it's falling apart. The hair is coming out. Well, you didn't teach her and share with her. Don't use a, nothing pointed to go down into the scalp. It's mm -hmm. material. It can tear. But right. then if that happened, you, you know, as a professional, I can repair this myself. Mm -hmm. I know how to flow polyurethane to repair the, 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 the lace or the, or the skin on the base. I can fix this. I don't have to send it back to the factory. I can put this hair back into the base. I can ventilate. So you have to know the different services and options for maintenance as well. And in that consultation, you go over those type of things, right? You go over the type, those type of things, letting her know what can happen. Mm -hmm. What can happen? Things can happen. Hair can fall out. It can shed. It can tear. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you mentioned investing in the, the client. So talk to us about investing in yourself as a professional because yes. that's, we really have to do that in order to have that knowledge and have that education to be able to even pass it on to our clients. Yeah, so to invest in yourself or the client, which one? In yourself. Yeah, invest it in yourself. You have to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. Things change all the time, just like technology. Mm -hmm. in this business of non-surgical hair replacement, you have to invest in what's the new materials, what's the new tapes, bonds, adhesives, what's the new uh, type of attachment methods. People are creating, designing all the time. And you have to stay on top of that. What mm -hmm. products we don't use anymore and why? And for me, mm -hmm. everything that you learn, you just go why, when, and how. Mm -hmm. 
in yeah. every area of service. Why, when, and how? Mm. And you need to be the solution. Be able to troubleshoot. You have to invest, take more classes, take uh, more training. Uh, you have to do that. I don't care how long you've been doing it. I still take classes. I still yeah. train. I still research. I got all those books out. So, of course, uh, after 10 years, I need to update. Mm-hmm. And the, but with me, Nikki, um, what I share, what I teach, is like the staple. A staple is something forever. You know, you have that black dress, timeless. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's the way I teach. What I teach you is timeless. It's like it doesn't change. It's going to be the same till Jesus come. But we might tweak it or do you know make some minor tweaks on it, but it's still the same. Lace mm-hmm. materials, lace going to be lace till Jesus come. When Jesus comes, lace is not going to end up being skin. It's going to still be lace, right? <laughs> right. And, and that's very important that you understand that as far as investing in yourself. You have to make sure that you take care of your body. Mm-hmm. You have to eat right. You have to have lunch. You got to eat right. You have to wear work shoes, not high heels. Mm-hmm. I'm speaking now. This is Mama Gigi. Because I went through all of that. I did it. I had to be cute all day, every day. And now I have like three back surgeries. So that's yeah. investing in yourself, taking care of yourself. Absolutely. You yeah. Have to take care of yourself so you can be the best that you can be. And you don't want to be hungry. When you're hungry, you have do stuff. Right, you right. <laughs> and stuff. So take time, have lunch. You yeah. Know, work like a human being. You're not a machine. Right. And you know, the money's not going nowhere. Stop overbooking yourself. Mm-hmm. That's what I like about non surgical hair replacement. You do two people a day, you through. You got to do 20 people, right. 15 people, 10 people a day. Right. So this transition, uh, it, it, it changes your life. It changes mm-hmm. your family life. And you change your client's life. Mm-hmm. You have yeah. to change their life. And that's what this business of non-surgical hair replacement is about changing lives. Giving yeah. that woman, man, child back what God gave them and they lost it. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, giving it back to them. Right. And giving yeah. them the right thing, the right prosthesis, mm-hmm. the right color, the right shape, the right fit, the right attachment method. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Yes. And that's what I'm speaking, guys. Listen up. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. You okay? It's hot in here, girl. Uh oh. Okay. Well, we're we're about to wrap up, so. Um, I want to, uh, I'll let you ask me another No, go ahead. Share something as well. Go ahead. Because I am so big on theory, Nikki. Uh, In our industry, people don't want theory. They want application. Do it. They want hands-on. Do it, do it, do it. But you need to know the when, the whys, and the how. When you went to beauty school, you had theory, then you had practical. You didn't go to beauty school and went straight up the floor, start permanent coloring people's hair. In this industry, you need theory, then practical. So that's what made me write the book, The Curriculum of Hair Replacement, because so many people didn't have the theory. In this business, you need to know your terminology. You make your money in the consultation room with your terminology, Mm -hmm. not with a bunch of hair pieces in that room, like a wig store. So theory is, is, is so important. Doctors make a living because of theory. They talk to you, you talk to them, then they tell you what's wrong with you. Okay, right? right. Absolutely. Same thing here. That's how we do it. Yeah, yeah. So That's theory, like- theory, the curriculum of hair replacement. Uh, the other one, don't lose your client because they're losing their hair. Now that I did is the informer. That's for people that not sure if they want to go into this industry or mm-hmm. not, but you can't make an educated decision without all the information. Right. So the informer give you the information to make an educated decision if I want to become a hair replacement specialist or not. So now I say, yes, I want to become a hair replacement specialist. So now I go to school. I get the curriculum. I learn my theory. I learn my application. And you can't get certified in one class. One right. class do not certify you. Think if you went to the heart doctor and he went to one class and done a heart surgery on you. Just think about that. <laughs> you've got to invest in your education. And right. mostly importantly, the theory, you've got to know that theory, guys. 
you got to know it mm -hmm. if you're going to run a business if you just want to do right. some hair that's a different story i'm not talking to those people i'm talking about, about the elite hair replacement specialists or ones that want to be a hair replacement specialist those mm -hmm. that want to navigate connected to hair weaving and hair replacement connected to because mm. you have some clients that might need some weaving and some that need both or one or the other. You need to know how to connect those dots, guys, and transition uh, for your client, right? right. And then mm -hmm. the, we talked about the medical hair loss, the All About Insurance Medical Edition textbook. That book is to help anyone that's doing hair replacement and they want to file a claim, submit a claim, become a provider. What if the client get denied? What do you do about mm -hmm. that? How do I get in with all these, uh, the VA and all these different uh, platforms, uh, networks to be able to have the service for my clients? You got to have resources, guys. So number yeah. one, Nikki, is go to school. Yes. Learn your theory. <laughs> Continuous <laughs> education. And that's not a look and learn class. Right. That's not a YouTube class. That's not continuous. Go to a professional mm -hmm. that is certified to give you the right information. Because you get the wrong information, the rest of your life you're doing it wrong because you, you talk you was taught wrong. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, you are preaching tonight. And so oh, no, and I can't help it, Nick. <laughs> That's why everybody called me Mama Gigi. Okay. <laughs> but it's like oh, wait a minute, and I'm old. It's exactly what everybody needs to hear because even yes. as a, you know, as a hairstylist, you know, where you're just doing hairstyling, yeah, there's so much theory behind what we do yes. that, like, that you're yes. at a disadvantage when you're just trying to, you know, be on your hustle, I guess. Yes, so, yeah. yeah, but you can be on your hustle and do it right. Yes, yeah, but like you say, you got right, to learn the theory, you work smarter and not harder. Mm -hmm. and you do it right, absolutely. It takes less. It takes I'm a, less to do yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm a big proponent on that one. Yes. But um, you teach some of the business, you teach them how to get into business or how to become a business in addition to all of the, the technical things. So, why was that important for you to have that like as part of your curriculum? Because I've seen so many of them that's very good at what they do, mm -hmm. but they couldn't run the business. So, a lot of things fell through the crack. Uh, because mm -hmm. they could not run that business. And in non-surgical hair replacement, it's like going to the doctor, it's a paper trail. Mm -hmm. You gotta have medical records, you know, with the doctor. So it's a paper trail of right. how to run that business. It's yeah. a paper trail on everything that you do in that business. You know, your files, uh, your, your records, uh, your uh, paperwork from doing a order form. Uh, going mm -hmm. to the factory, manufacturers, all of that is the business part. Right, right. You got to have it in order. Organization is very important in hair replacement. Organization. Okay. You don't want clients walking in the door, you going through bags and boxes, looking for what you're looking for to do their hair. It's, it's right. order. Everything is orderly. Wow. Yeah. That's, so that's the business good. is very important, the business part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Contracts. I don't use the word contracts anymore, agreements. Mm -hmm. Contracts is so harsh. But if you have an agreement with somebody, they respect that. They right. agree to it. It was a choice. I didn't force mm -hmm. you. It's right. an agreement for both of us mm -hmm. to protect you and to protect the client. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love you. It's like, um, so tell us, like, who inspires you? You know, what keeps you going and keeps you excited about? life and the industry and your teachings well the industry what inspires me right now in my life is being able to share pass the torch to the next generation when mm -hmm. i say next generation i mean next generation of hair replacement specialist mm -hmm. it motivates me nikki i love this business so much i've done it for so long i've had many pains and headaches and cries and tears and depression and couldn't sleep and stress and lost buildings and homes and cars and all of that. I've been through all of that and mm -hmm. it motivates me to share with them so they don't make the mistakes that I made. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's in me. It's in me. I don't want to die with this in me. Mm -hmm. So I put most of it in a book, but as long as I have breath, 
I want to talk to you. I want to share with you. I want to encourage you. I want to empower you. I want to position you. I want to give it all to you. Everything that's in this little mind of mine uh, concerning <laughs> non-surgical hair replacement. And it, it encouraged me every day to do what I'm doing right now, to be able to share this. I have yeah. met, I've met her all the time. When they met, call me. I love to talk to them and help sure. them through whatever they're dealing with in that chair. Or maybe they even stuck and don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They got the business. They don't have no clients. <laughs> I just love to mentor, encourage, and prepare, and position you. And I give you work. I give you mm -hmm. homework. You okay. got to do the work. I can't do it for you. It says, right. teach a man to fish, he eat forever. You give them fish, eat that one time. I believe that. So what it inspires me is to that I can keep on giving what I have that God has blessed me with, mm -hmm. this gift. And part of my 80% of what I do is a gift from God. Yeah. The other part is education and knowledge. But, you know, uh, designing, creating, uh, even where to put the dryer in the, in the room, it's all God directed directed to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we can feel and, that. And of course, you. my grandchildren is my why. My grandchildren <laughs> is my why. I have five grandbabies, and I want to leave uh, for them. I want them to know who Nana was and what Nana did and what impact Nana left in this world, that I made this world a better place by being here. And so that's very important to me. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have me tearing up here. Ah. <laughs> yeah. But that is wonderful. Yeah. So um, let's see, where do you kind of see this industry going with hair replacement and, you know, we're in 2021. We survived 2020. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, like you said, people are, are still in need of these types of services. Yeah. So what are your well, thoughts or, or predictions for as we move forward? Well, I'm going to say what my prayer is. My prayer okay. is to get our industry back. My prayer is to get to take our industry back. Cosmetologists, barber, hair weaving, hair replacement, trichology, and, and non hair replacement. First, to get the hair replacement back. If we do our part and be the professional that we should be, we can get it back. Mm. If we don't, I see it being self-service everything in this industry. They can buy it directly from the factory. They can do it as do-it-yourselfers. <laughs> if we do not stand up and come together and, go and have some rules and some bylaws and come together as a team, it's going to be gone completely. It's almost gone. So mm -hmm. my prayer is we take our industry back. We take it by by networking and coming together like we're doing today. Mm -hmm. Like the event we're doing in Atlanta on the 25th. Sharon yeah. Reeves, Tamika James, Amber McCray, uh, Bill Cole, myself. Coming together. You're stronger together. One person, one link, break easy. Stronger <laughs> together. We got to come together as, a, as professionals. And we yeah. got to stand together and we got to say the same thing and mean the same thing. Mm. You can't talk English and talk French and talk German when we're talking to somebody that only speaks English. We got to be, have the same information coming out of our mouth. Right. So we got to come together and take this industry back. Yeah. It's going to be self serve, direct, do it yourself. Mm. And what a disaster that will be. Um, I worry wow. about the future. I really worry about the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do. I do. I yeah. Do. Well, but all I things can change. Mm -hmm. We can change it. People like you that is help making this change. Yeah. So, yeah. Know, we can do it, but we got to do the work. We got to do the work. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's the whole thing, you know, like with encouraging entrepreneurship is different than just like, oh, I'm, I'm good at doing hair or whatever. It's like, no, yes. to build businesses, to build like yes. you know, legacies and, and, and they all need that. It. They mm -hmm. need it, Nikki. They need you so bad. <laughs> and I'm going to make sure I reach out and network with you and do some things with you. Because yeah. I have a large audience that I, you know, train with and they need you. Yeah. My specialty is cranial prosthesis. Mm -hmm. I know the business. I know stuff from my experience, but I'm not that person. Right. And I believe in bringing in people that's that that's your lane, that's your specialty. Right. So I want you to have the best of the best in whatever category. So that would be 
bring in Nikki as teaching them the business part of it. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's like I love to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, yeah it make, make this whole thing better. Yes. So, so what's next? You told us a few things. You've got your books. You've got um, the event coming up on the 25th, and that's going to be a live event. Is that correct? In person? The first live event okay. in over a year and a half. <laughs> right. Wow. Uh, the first live event is going to be April 25th through the 28th, four-day masterclass. Mm -hmm. uh, Sharon Reeves, Anna McCray, Tamika James, Bill Cole, and myself. We're going okay. over to Todd. Technology, media marketing, hair weaving, hair replacement, men hair replacement, and the theory of non-surgical hair replacement, mm -hmm. the manufacturing, the designing, the ordering, how to make them, all of that. Four-day event, hands-on, right? Then I'm going to do it annually, I hope. It's the first one, social distancing. I got masses made for everybody, temperature check six feet apart we're going to do it right but I, the, the experience the atmosphere mm -hmm. i want them to come out i'm gonna serve them lunch i'm gonna supply everything they need go to a nice room and relax then up and have breakfast on your patio come down to class mm -hmm. our power you know what we can educate and service nikki but we got to touch the mind so okay. we're going to talk to them about that ship what's holding you back what you right. afraid of why you don't have no clients What's, mm -hmm. what's holding that? So we got right. to shift the mind first. And then we'll go into the classes because I don't care how much you give somebody. If they're stuck in the mind, it's just another yeah. waste of money. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Well, that sounds phenomenal. So tell us where they can, can reach you and how they can reach you, how they can get more information about this and get signed up for it. Oh, yeah. On my website, guys, Hair Replacement by Gigi. Uh, all over Facebook and all the groups as uh, the link to register uh, to get your hotel room at the Marriott Gateway, Atlanta, Georgia. Registration okay. is on all of our uh, Facebook, Facebook pages as well as our website uh, pages in Instagram. Uh, all of those pages uh, is the registration and also the agenda. So you can see what am I investing in every day, mm -hmm. you'll know at what time, what's going on. And I'm supplying everything you need. And financing is available too, Nikki. We, we offer a different type of financing for them, for the ones that financially can't just afford it. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a ticket item. It's an investment right. as well as we do in virtual. So everybody can oh. leave. Some people have children, they're homeschooled, and they cannot leave. So right. we do have it. The option is to take it online as well, but to be in, to be in person. We want you to come out in person if you can. But if you can't, yep. well, you still can be a part of it. So that's wow. the master class. And what's new coming out for me is it's called Just for Men, Non-Surgical Hair Replacement. That's where I'm coming out with my hair replacement book, Just for Men. And I'm doing wow. it with the barber. His uh, name is Bill Cole, the okay. barber. He'll be there. He's a testimony uh, from my training. Now he's a hair replacement specialist for men. He's teaching Man. an educator, blowing it out the water, baby. So that's what we want to do, change people's lives. I want you to leave my place, not the same, and being able to go back and use mm -hmm. every tool I put in your toolbox. I want to make sure you go home and use them. So we're going to help them unpack them bags. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that sounds fabulous. It's like absolutely yeah. fabulous. And then the whole yeah. meme thing, that's yeah. almost scary because some of them just look so real in there. <laughs> it's like, wow. I yeah. think of it like the uh, the body magic years ago where yeah. you look at all sucked in and then you get them yeah. home. Like what? You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, how the men seem. But that is great. I so appreciate you being here and sharing uh, all your, your wealth of knowledge, your wisdom, your heart. And it's like, this has been absolutely thank wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's like, I know you had to so kind of go time. through a lot to make it all happen with uh, traveling. Yeah. And yeah. So I'm in another state at another home. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We're grateful. Yeah. It's like, it's always. So I want to say thank account. you to the audience. I want to say thanks to the audience for taking the time. To listen to me. I love you guys. And all I want to say is I'll see you at the top because the bottom is too crowded. Okay. <laughs> That's it. We've got That's um it. 
We've got a few uh, comments we'll say before we oh, head out of here. But uh, Thomas St. Okay. Jackson, hello, Mickey, and guest GG. Um, we have a Facebook user who didn't um, put your name. If you want to put your name, it's like you can just go down to the bottom. Um, hey, Mickey and GG. Um, Odessa Durham says, love GG. She's so yes. awesome. <laughs> yes, Odessa worked with me many times. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, Sherry Bowman Daniels was like she was uh, saying thank you back back a little while ago. It's like you were saying something that was right on point. She was just like thank you. Uh, and, um, yeah, um, Odessa says beautiful person, always giving. Absolutely, uh, Denisa Hedgewood. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, but she said one accord. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Gigi is the best. Thank you. Okay, it looks like the Facebook user is Nishan. So, <laughs> my, my yeah. Sister. Yeah. So, um, one of your students as well. So, yeah, she's a specialist now. Yeah. I passed yep. that torch to her. Awesome. Yay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's she's definitely put in the work, put in the investment in herself and then her Absolutely. training. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. So, thank you so much. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for being here this evening. And we will definitely look forward to, you know, getting folks um, to the event live if possible, Thank you. virtual yes. if not. And um, yes. yeah, and just waiting and watching to see what all comes next. And so the yes. placement. And thank you. Thank you, Nikki. And I can't wait to work with you again for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, okay. let's do something. All right. Good night. Yeah. It's like, I want to. Um, just let everybody know it's like next, not even next, next Tuesday, I'll be back. We'll be talking about hair loss, but before next Tuesday, I'll be back on Thursday with legend and icon um, show producer, Fred Miller will be here on Thursday. So I'm excited to interview him and hear his story backstage, behind the scenes and all of the people that he knows very well. So he'll share some, some scoop with us um, from, from backstage and also next um, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll be back, like you said, talking about hair loss, and I'll be here with Danielle McBride, and she oh, yes. she talks about some fabulous thing about the the body never lies, and we'll be getting another little layer of you know the root of hair loss, and so yes. I'm super excited about having her here. And um, let's see, it's like we've got the salons we got. So um, you guys definitely go to beautysuperstars.com if you are interested in a salon suite, thinking about a salon suite. It's like it will help save you a lot of headache. Um, how did you say work smarter versus harder? And it's yes. like a, one of my things. So um, and we want to thank, of course, our um, sponsor, Black Beauty Expo. And it is the hottest show um, for creative entrepreneurs in hair, fashion, photography, modeling and makeup. So everything right. in the industry, we cover it all. And um, next show will be live in person um, August 1st in Atlanta. So um, right. that's the hot spot. And um, I'm, as I mentioned earlier, it's like I'm actually their global education director. So if you're interested in um, educating for Black Beauty Expo to let me know if you want to expand your visibility and partner with Beauty Superstars Talk to let me know. And we will um, look forward to seeing you again very soon on Thursday. So um, definitely. And if you've missed any of the previous episodes, we just finished up a fabulous series on natural hair um, that can all be viewed and or listened to on the podcast. All of it's available at beautysuperstars.com now. It's like we've got kind of a new look to the website. So check it out and um, see what's what's available, what speaks to you. Yes. So thank you again, Gigi. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. You, everybody. And night. I will see you on Thursday. Yes. So have bye a great bye. night. Good night. Bye-bye.